and welcome to another booktube video from me lauren from lauren and the books and it's halfway through the year over halfway through the year in fact we're in july now and today i'm going to be talking about my favorite books from the first half of the year now i always try and make these videos 10 books because i love a nice round number and i love a top 10 but this video has actually got 11 books two of which by the same author more on that later um but yeah love love watching people's um videos of best books of the year so far because it sets you up doesn't it for a good reading list for the rest of the year if you haven't read them already um, and I really like making these lists as well because I like I just love checking in with myself and being like oh yeah this is how your reading's going and also I like the fact that I will be watching this video hi Lauren in December um, because I'll be watching this video to see if any of these books appear in my best books of 2020 which I, I mean I've read some really good books this year so far like I'm I'm looking forward to the second half to see if any of them top them now sometimes I put these in an order sometimes I don't this is a new order I'm 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 showing you them in the order of which I've read them this year um normally I do them in sort of like no order and then towards the end I'm just like oh and, and this was my favorite book of the year um but these are all in no order apart from the order that I read them in however the last book that I'm going to review I think is going to be one of my favorite books ever um so it has just so happened um that 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 that's happened but sometimes you need a bit of distance from these things don't you but I really really did love it right so anyway shut up and get on with it so the first book I'm going to talk about is Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reid um I read this um early on in the year I listened to the audiobook of it and really really loved it and this is one of those um books that I I gave four stars at the time and the the, the longer it sat with me the longer I thought that is a wonderful brilliant book and this book guys if you are part of a book club, if you are starting a book club, this would be a fantastic, fantastic book to discuss at a book club. You follow two characters, Amira and Alix. Amira is Alix's babysitter, Amira is black and Alix is white. Um, there is just so much sort of, so if I could reduce the, the plot down to like one thing is that Amira is a babysitter for Alix. She takes Alix's baby to a shop one uh, to, to a shop one night when she's babysitting, um, and a security guard stops her and wants to know that why Amira, who is black, why is she with a white child, um, and that that's sort of like the, the the that's what it opens with, and that's uh, an event that gets referred back to throughout. But there is so much more to this book. There's so much power play. There's so much um, sort of tension building. The tension building in this is is fantastic. The the way that Amira and Alix's lives overlap um and um some of the like the the people that they've they've um that have appeared in their past that are now appearing now oh it's just wonderful I just thought it was absolutely brilliant really really loved it um and yeah I just feel like as a discussion piece it is brilliant and just a really really great all-round book um so yeah and the audiobook was was fantastic I really really enjoyed the audiobook uh, the next book is the, those aforementioned uh sort of two for the price of one um it's Girl Woman by Bernadine Evaristo and Mr. Loverman by Bernadine Evaristo. Now I read Girl Woman Other earlier this year when I was in Centre Parks in fact in March um, and uh, I've now lent that book out. Um, I've also bought it for uh, a, a whole host of people for birthdays. It's out in the paperback now. It's a beautiful book to look at even without considering what's on the inside. Um, and then more recently I've read um, Mr. Loverman by Bernadine Evaristo and these are the sort of two that I want to, to bunch together. Bernadine Evaristo is going to be one of my favourite authors. I ab absolutely love her writing i think she's fantastic the way she can conjure up characters so that they're basically like sat opposite you having a chat with you she's just fantastic girl woman of her is a, a masterpiece of writing it follows um, a, a host of different women um in britain uh, all over sort of times like up like up to date now like modern times back historically and just all of these women are just so well put together and are real women um and i just i just loved that i love the way their stories um interwove with each other so that uh, someone who who featured as a minor character in one of the the first stories would come back and be like a, a, a main a main but a main po point in another story i'm really looking forward to revisiting that with that in mind so that it's sort of like you're you're in on who these people are when when it starts and i'm going to listen to the audiobook of it next year because i just thought it was fantastic i mean I, it's fantastic and i'm sure it's going to be appearing in a lot of people's best books um of this year Mwah! masterpiece 
And also, I have recently listened to the audiobook of Mr. Loverman, um, which is another of Bernadine's books, and I think I might even have loved this even more than Girl, Woman, Other. I just loved it so much. You're following um, a character, Barrington, Barry, um, and he is a chap who's come over from Antigua when he was um, younger with his wife, Carmel. Um, you're following him and Carmel's um, life, but also you're following, um, you're, you're looking into a love story that he's got with his best friend, Maurice, uh, that he has been, who he's been in love with um, and in a sexual and romantic relationship with since they were um, young lads. Um, and uh, yeah, it was just, uh, I loved Barry uh, and Maurice's, um, how much they fancied each other. They're all, they're also sort of like, a, a generation of um, of people that you don't hear love stories about and you don't hear about people who really really fancy each other in their 70s um, and uh, that, that's what you've got here and they're sort of trying to negotiate how they could end up living together um, and, and what that would be like for them and it's both their dream to be able to live together and it's just so like so much love and in there um, and yeah you're also um, you're also looking into the lives of um, the, the, the daughters of um, Barry and Carmel um, and their granddaughters. So you're hearing about sort of like immigrants and then the children of immigrants. Um, and it's just, I just really, really loved it. It was really, really well paced and uh, really fun and has a really happy ending, which I really, really liked in a book. I, I feel like a lot of books I read don't have really, really happy endings. Um, and it's always a nice treat when that happens. So yeah, two books by Bernadina Varisto. Cannot wait to read more by her. Absolutely love it. Uh, the next one is one that I have here with me, um, and this is Glass Town by Isabel Greenberg. So um, I loved this book, and I'm a big fan of Isabel Greenberg anyway, so it was no surprise to me that I loved this as much as I did. Um, this um, came to me uh, and uh, came as a bit of a, a little beacon of hope and light at the beginning of lockdown. So anyone watching this in the future, it's 2020 at the moment and we've, we're, we're on our way out of lockdown following the coronavirus pandemic. Um, and um, early on in the lockdown, David and I pledged <clears throat> to do a cosy reading night every other Friday. Cosy reading night is a night that I run where um, I'm active on Instagram and Twitter throughout, sort of when we get cosy, read, I encourage people to read along with us. Um, and this was one of the first books I read for cosy reading night when lockdown started happening. Um, and it was a very fraught time at that time, very uncertain. I mean, <laughs> we're still uncertain now, but it was all very new to us and um, the, uh, we had a lot weighing on us at that time, I think. Um, and this was just pure escapism and also pure imagination. Isabel Greenberg, her, her storytelling and the way she, she shows that in, in, in drawings is just just fantastic. This is a story about the four Bronte siblings. The actual Brontes, you know Brontes, Jane Eyre, Wuthering Heights, those guys. Um, <clears throat> and an imaginary world they've made up called Glass Town. Um, and it's them talking about Glass Town and visiting Glass Town. What I loved about this is that the color palette changes from when they're in Glass Town and when they're not. They play different characters within Glass Town. It's sort of like what I imagine maybe like Dungeons and Dragons are like, but with your imagination and no little, uh, um, playing pieces or anything. She says, I've never even played Dungeons and Dragons. Um, but yeah, I just love this. And it was just a sort of like, like, like I said, a beacon of light and hope. Um, Isabel Greenberg's books are fantastic. And if you know readers um, and uh, you know um, people who love reading, then these are perfect gifts for them because not only are they beautifully illustrated, I mean, look at that. They also deliver on the, on the plot and the writing is just fantastic. This is probably my favorite of hers. Um, and I loved it and I gave it five stars. Mwah! beautiful um the next one is a book that I've been raving about all year. This is a, uh, this was a real surprise to me. It is Grown Ups by Marion Keys. I've also learned out, it's very telling, isn't it? That all of my, um, I haven't really got many of these books here with me because I've lent a lot of them out to people like, this was my favorite book, read it. Um, and at the moment, my cousin Laura has this book and it's Grown Ups by Marion Keys. Um, this is a women's contemporary fiction book, which is a genre I previously, before this year would have said, ah, I hate women's contemporary fiction. Um, and after reading this, and I read this for um, my, I read it for, the Irish Readathon, but we also read it for Patreon Book Club, um, which was lovely because it meant we could have a really good chat about it. It's a fantastic, fantastic family saga, um, which feels so sort of comforting and like a lovely big hug, but also deals with really serious issues as well as still feeling quite light. Um, there's a lot in there about um, sort of extended families, eating disorders, one of the characters got a serious eating disorder, money, money worries, um, and uh, yeah, it's all, it's all dealt with in a really like wholesome and like 
complete way um while still feeling really like and also just feeling like um you're really in there with the characters. Now, what I loved about this is it's a massive book. It's a really big brick of a book. Um, and it was really nice to be in that place with those characters for a long time and to sort of sit with them and, and, and go through these tumultuous times. And you are on a journey with them. You, you, you visit various times in their lives, sort of um, Christmases, birthdays, things like that. Um, and yeah, I just feel like it's really, really fun and really comforting. And if you want to sort of like something to get yourself immersed in, and that was another, it was another one of my lockdown reads that I was able to sort of like forget about other stuff that was going on and just really get involved with the, um, I think they're called the O'Learys maybe, the O'Leary family and just have a lovely, lovely time with them. So yeah. Loved that, loved it so much. Next book was a historical fiction book and it is The Mercies by Kieran Millwood Hargraves. I can't believe this didn't get long listed for the Women's Prize for Fiction. I absolutely adore this. This is, as I said, historical fiction set on an island in Norway um, and um, all of the, the men on this island, not all of them, but like the majority of the men on this island go on a fishing trip and um, and their, their ship goes down. So this island is um, is left with uh, mainly women running it. Um, what I, <laughs> there's, there's so much in here that I love, but I don't really want to give away much of the plot but what I will say is there's sort of aspects of witchcraft in there and witch trials there's forbidden love in there there is I remember saying this when I reviewed it the first time around one of the most sort of sexually charged um flatbread baking scenes I mean have you ever been in a sexually charged flatbread baking situation that I have ever read? Um, and yeah, just so much sort of lingering eye contact and hands touching and things like that. It's great. It really delivered. I really, really had a great time reading it. And that front cover, look at it, it's beautiful, isn't it? Really, really, really recommend this highly. And as I said, I can't believe it wasn't long listed for the Women's Prize for Fiction. Can't believe it. The next one is actually a reread, and I don't normally include rereads in these, um, but if they didn't make, I, I don't know why this didn't make my, my favourites the first time round, because it's such a great book. It's actually a book that I bought David as a gift for Christmas a few years ago. Um, it's Food Anatomy by Julia Rothman. Um, she has written and illustrated this. Now, she's done a, a series of these books. There's one called Farm Anatomy and one called Nature Anatomy, um, where she, she writes and illustrates, um, si like, books. And what, before I show you the beautiful beauty that is in here. When I was younger, I used to really, really love reading reference books. And um, I was actually chatting about this with my mum and dad recently. Quite often for Christmas, I would get a reference book. I used to get an encyclopedia or one of those, um, is it Dorlin and Kingsley? Um, like an, a, a book about Egypt or something like that. And I used to sit for hours and just really, really relish it. And I'd have favourite pages within those books that I'd go back to all the time and just had a lovely time. So this really reminded me of like getting one of those books for Christmas and then sort of sitting there and just reading it. Um, even though this wasn't my book and I actually bought it for David. But it, it brought the same sort of nostalgic feelings of, of reading a reference book. Um, and yeah, this is all about food and about the customs around food and about the preparing of food and the eating of that food um, from all over the world um, and it's just wonderful so each um, chapter is set into different uh, a different kind of food or a different kind of practice about food um, if I just read you some of the uh, the chapter titles set into like fruit and veg street food season to taste drink up sweet uh, sweet tooth uh, meat um, and if I can just show you some of my favorite things within here the first one's about pizza so this is a page I really like about all different types of pizza. Really, really enjoy this page. There's also a page like that about pasta. <laughs> this page with all different pasta shapes on, I also very much enjoy. And yeah, I mean, I could just go on forever about this. There's the anatomy of a food truck, just everything in here. If you like food and you like the sort of like just expanding your knowledge whilst also looking at really, really pretty pictures, then you'll love this, as I did. Really, really loved it. Really enjoyed it so much. So loved it. The next book is another book I've lent out to my friend Emma by somebody called Emma, Emma Dabry, uh, and the book is Don't Touch My Hair, and this is a non-fiction book all about um, the history, uh, black history, um, going from sort of um, uh, slavery to sort of modern day racism, the appropriation of black hair, the fetishization of black hair, um, and all of this history is told through 
black hair. Now, this is one of the most original history books I've ever read. Uh, one of the most accessible, readable, um, Emma's uh, own sort of style of uh, and her, her personality absolutely shines through this book, um, which is really, really lovely in a history book. Um, and I just loved it. It's so educational. It really gave so much and there's there's so much covered in this book like i said there's like um like the fetishization of uh, black hair the appropriation of it we're looking at slavery it's even got maths in it and how black hair relates to maths and and patterns and symmetry and um formulas and things like that it just had everything in it it was fantastic um it really like when I was reading it, I was I felt so um, like I was really learning something, which I know it's just like it feels like a really stupid thing to say. But so often I would read um, a, 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 a non-fiction book, and at the time I'm really involved with it. And then sort of by the time I finished it, a lot of that stuff I've chucked out. I read a lot. I read an awful lot. Um, so I, I don't always get like stuff kept in here the whole time. But all of that is just staying up there, and it is it was a it, really really great book. Now that I've said like these aren't in any particular order but that is one of my best books of the year I, I, I can't see any way that that's not going to appear on my best books of this year so far because I just thought it was absolutely fantastic it's recently been released in the US I don't think it's called don't touch my hair um, if I can find out the title of it I'm sure I can I will link it um, down below so when I write the name of it I will put next to it what what it's called um in the us but yeah fantastic book absolutely fantastic the next book is another non-fiction book it's a book called hood feminism by mickey kendall i listened to this on audiobook um and this was a real eye-opener for me you know guys um i um oh i say relatively new to feminism but not really now i mean I'm, I'm a good five years deep into feminism and it really made me take a look at my sort of brand of feminism um and what feminism that i'd been sort of celebrating and things like that and it made me realize that the, the feminism that I sort of follow and the feminism that I've read up about um, isn't as inclusive as I first thought um, and not only that it is actually used in, in some ways can be used um, to, to damage black women and as and as a weapon towards black women it really made me look at um, how I can be more inclusive in my feminism and how well intersectional feminism is 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 the name of the game for me now um, now it also um, looked into different issues that I didn't first think were feminist issues and it was um, it was Mickey's sort of um, delivery of that particularly as she she narrated the audiobook herself um and and she brings so uh, when you're listening to her talk about actual um personal situations that she's been in and how they relate to to feminism it really does it really was eye-opening for me issues that i hadn't really considered to be feminist issues before but now are glaringly obviously that things like gun crime things like hunger things like um having to provide like in, for example with hunger like if you are a single parent family and most single parent families are women single parent families if you're not getting paid as much as men are then your children are going hungry not only because you're a single parent family but also because you're a woman which i know that's not like like when, when it's boiled down to that sort of simple thing you're just like God, why? Hunger is a feminist issue. Um, it's really, really great. Like I said, the delivery of it was fantastic. I loved the audio of it. Um, and it's definitely one that I will revisit time and time again because I just think it's absolutely amazing. And we're down to the last two now. And these are both books that I have here with me. Um, these are really recent reads, so I haven't been able to force them into the hands of my friends yet. The first one is Longbourn by Joe Baker. Now in June I read a lot of Pride and Prejudice retellings um, and this was the last one that I read um, and this was my favourite by far. I gave this five stars, I really really loved it. This is Pride and Prejudice retold from the servant's point of view. Now what I really loved about this compared to the other retellings and also just like loved it as a book was that the original story really holds its own. Um, so although Pride and Prejudice is is the, the what this is based on that's really much more sort of like background what's going on in the background um, you're following um, servants uh, a, a, a maid called Sarah and a new footman called James you're following their lives before during and after Pride and Prejudice and that story alone I was so invested in that sometimes like you'd, you'd remember or like something would happen and they'd say oh Elizabeth's been proposed to by Mr Darcy and you'd think oh fucking hell yeah that was just about <laughs> Pride and Prejudice I forgot that was going on um, what I also really liked about it I'm a big Downton 
Abby fan. So I thought that this was going to be fantastic. I, I really had high hopes for it because I love Downton Abbey and um, I was thinking, oh, this is just going to be sort of like Pride and Prejudice collaborated with Downton Abbey. Um, and it was that, but it was also much more real. Um, so you were seeing much more the, the, the real sides of their duties rather than sort of like just someone like dress it like putting a corset on elizabeth bennett you were like having to hear about them having to wash mud out of elizabeth bennett's uh, dress because she'd gone over to the bingley's house or even about even more guttier stuff like periods and shit and piss and like they, the, there was no sort of hiding behind that and it really made you look at the the bennett's and the darcy's and the bingley's in a different way and um, particularly like the balls you were just thinking well how daft is all this like they're going to this ball and there's so much rigmarole around it and um then the mrs bennett inviting people round for dinner and expecting hill the the housekeeper to just sort of be able to click her fingers and put on this amazing buffet and it just it made you think about how silly um the the majority of like the the gentry what's happening with the the upper classes is when people's like people's lives are going on below stairs and like i said the original story was just fantastic really really held up i really loved sarah the main character in this she was very sort of driven and um like she desired things that were considered above her station um and i really really um respected that about her for for a sort of ha housemaid of that time really really enjoyed this thought it was really 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 good uh, this was another one we discussed for patreon book club which was lovely to to have a good chat about this um and yeah these uh yeah very highly scored it did as well um, and then as i said the last book um is one that um, i think is going to go on to be one of my favorite books of all time um, and that's the vanishing half by brit bennett now this is the first brit bennett i've read and i absolutely adored it follows uh twins desiree and stella who are black um however they are both very fair very very fair skinned um, after running away from home um stella begins to pass as a white uh woman and um she ends up getting a job where people believe that she's a white woman and she ends up sort of um just deserting her sister desiree and going um, and having this sort of like well it's a secret life i guess as as a white woman which includes sort of like all the, the all the things she's ever wanted in her sort of like dream life um which includes things like a, a banker husband and a and a white daughter um and uh yeah it's it, it's following that and then you're also following the the daughters of the twins and so cousins although they they, they don't know each other um and desiree's daughter so desiree marries um a, a black chap and um turns out to be a dick um and uh, her daughter is very dark skinned um and uh i loved her daughter jude and her boyfriend reese um there's a, oh, jude was just like just such a inquisitive and driven woman like young girl just so so kind-hearted her boyfriend reese is trans um and um is is saving up for um a, a, a an operation to have um his breasts removed and she wants to help him with that but she she's she's just measuring up so much stuff in her mind like she wants to help him with that but she doesn't want him to think that he's a charity case towards her and she really respect she's just trying she's just really good with like setting down boundaries and just knowing knowing stuff she's just such a just like such a, an absolute babe i really really loved her there's just so many as well as all that plot going on there, which is like a fantastic plot, and I was really gripped through the plot throughout, the characters are fantastically well developed, the writing is beautiful, I can't wait to read The Mothers, I can't wait to read anything that Britt Bennett reads, uh, writes, so thought provoking, so engaging, thought it was fantastic, really think it's going to be one of my favourite books of all time, absolutely loved it. So there we go, those are my 10, 11 favorite books of the year so far let me know if you've read any of these let me know some of your favorite books of the year always looking to collate always looking to collate a new uh, a reading list um and uh, yeah i'm going to be enjoying watching a lot of people's uh, uh, best books of the year so far videos so that's it from me and i'll see you all again soon for another booktube video goodbye